Hey guys, Insanity is good here. Um, we're gonna be continuing with this let's play of Still Life. Um, we are joined today by my cat, so if there's a little bit of background noise, it's just him trying to be sweet and demanding my attention. Um, <laughs> in the last video, um, there was a couple of things that I noticed when um, I watched my recording to upload that um, at the time when I was recording I didn't quite realize. Um, first thing is uh, Corona, the coroner, uh, mentions that uh, Skolnick, the uh, primary investigator on this case for the police, has an errand boy who's been picking up the files uh, from him to give to the investigator and apparently he is missing. So that's a piece of uh, very interesting information, kind of wondering what happened to this guy. Maybe he caught on to something, um, was also killed, who knows. And then um, the other thing that I noticed was uh, when we talked to um, Apollina at the uh, garden or true garden park, whatever you want to call it, um, she mentioned a man named Roman. And at first, I thought she was talking about the old guy who was um, Ida's old uh, pimp, for lack of a better word. Uh, but after um, watching the video again, um, the guy has a completely different name. So I'm not sure who this Roman guy is. But I guess we'll find out or something. I don't know. But so far, it looks like things are looking pretty pretty strange, that's for sure. Um, I would have to say the old guy in the wheelchair in the previous video, um, he's definitely a suspect. He seems to know a bit too much, and the fact that he won't like come right out and say, hey, he used to be a cop or something, kind of makes me think that he knows more than he's letting on. And um, Epelina herself, she seems to, I don't know, she just rubbed me the wrong way, the way she was talking about the other girls, and it seems like, well, you know, if one of the other girls got a bit more popular, got a few more wealthy clients, you know, it wouldn't be beneath a woman like her to, uh, maybe get this Roman character to, uh, get rid of some of the competition. Um, but we're still early on in the case. We don't really know, um, what's really going on. So, uh, there's that, and, um, yeah, last video, um, we, uh, yeah, we, uh, got to the quarter, got some info, looked in the safe, um, went to the park, took a ring, but then the ring was stolen from us, bastards, and, uh, then we met the, uh, strange gentleman who lives in the burned out buildings, and, uh, as we were leaving, Ida came and told us that there's a girl in this area who was a victim but managed to get away, so she's still alive. So we're gonna go and talk to her and see if she can give us any more information because I would love to get some answers because I feel like we're going nowhere so far, just kind of running around talking to people. <clears throat> I just woke up not too long ago, so I'm okay. sorry. I'm out of here. Oh shit. Oh shit. It's a guy. Okay, so this guy, that guy is, um, I guess he works for the pimp dude. And, uh, he has a gun. That's not cool. Um, okay, so we can't go over there without him shooting us. Maybe. So that's the Rolls Royce. That's... Okay, so he obviously has been driving this around because there was a car like this at the um, crime scene. So, um... Hmm... Let's see if there's anything we can use to distract him. Uh, nope. Oh. Oh. Oh, apparently there's journals that I didn't even know existed. Shit. 
Okay, um, let's read this really quick. This will this will be a good recap, I guess, compared to what I was blabbing about. Chapter two: The Persistence of Memory, a prologue. Prague's like any other city, I guess. Some of it can be really beautiful, other parts can be downright ugly. I was thinking that even when I arrived here while I was getting off the train. The station house was a really nice building, but it had years of city grime covering its walls, and that platform was filthy. But I suppose I shouldn't be too hard on the station, since that's also where I saw Ida for the first time. She's just like her city in a way. She had a rotten upbringing, but she's really a beautiful woman, and of course I don't just mean her looks. I tried painting Ida once, but it didn't quite work out the way I wanted, which is just like my entire painting career. Prague is in Paris, where you could always find someone interested in your art, no matter what it looked like. In Prague, the critics want everything to look like Kupka, but the public still wants to buy nothing but Mukka. I, I don't get that, but I'm assuming it's some kind of art joke. Neither one is really my thing, so with no money coming in that way, it looks like I'm back to being a private dick. A man who wants to create art but works in scum. Just like Prague. At least Ida gives my life some beauty. Victim by the shore. Well, now I finally know what's been bothering my love lately. Some friends from her old job have been killed, possibly as many as seven in total. Nobody cares, of course. What's a few hookers, more or less? So Ida asked me to find the killer for her. Looks like the same guy did all of them, and he's a real sicko too. He's got everyone scared, including Ida. Her friends are willing to pay for my services, but I have a feeling I'm going to politely turn them down. No, you're kind of being an ass about it. When I got to the site of this latest murder, I met the investigator, Skolnik. All over the world, cops are the same. They fall into only a handful of types. This one is the kind who rests on his laurels after his first big case. Doesn't want to get his hands dirty anymore, he's too good for it. If he wants cases with higher status, he should move to a nicer part of town. Very true. Introducing Stasek. Stasek, on the other hand, is the opposite of Skalnik. He's simple but not dumb. And he's proud, but unlike Skalnik, he tries to earn it. And that's fine, because most cases are solved through persistence. Stasek's pr proven himself a good band to have in my corner. That must have been the um, other cop guy that he talked to, that had the black eye. <clears throat> Introducing Melina. Melina could be a really pretty girl if she had a better life. I've met prostitutes in America, London, Paris, and now here, and it's always the same story. The life breaks them down, bears their hopes and dreams. The good is still there, but you have to look really hard. And what John is going to bother with that? I don't know. Maybe a decent one? Introducing Corona. A morgue in an old church. Makes sense, I suppose. If they're good enough to use as field hospitals during wartime, then why not? They've got one big room, and they're often the strongest buildings in town. Plus, you've got Almighty God looking down on the bodies. It's a plus. Vision at the park. I got another damned vision. I was hoping when I changed jobs again that this relic of my old days as a snoop wouldn't come back to haunt me, but I guess it was too much to hope for. At least the stupid things are actually good for something. Okay, so he's aware of these visions and he's had them before, I guess. The Crow Man. Let's see. A man who wants to remain anonymous, but claims he's from London and has figured out more about the case than the primary investigator. Plus, he can apparently train birds to steal for him. Why do I feel like he knows more than he's telling me? Okay, so Gus isn't the only one that um, seems to think something's up with this guy. Uh, what's this? City of Prague. Oh, this is a package. Um, but the report from the girl about the girl. City of Prague coroner's office autopsy report number one two o nine. Viti Anika, opinion. Death was due to her throat being cut. The victim had her trachea and carotid artery severed by a single deep lash with a slash with a very sharp knife. The lack of defensive wounds suggests that she was taken from behind, her throat cut before she had a chance to react. The victim was then stabbed repeatedly and then eviscerated. The condition of the body and quantity of blood found at the scene confirmed that she was killed where she was found. Recent fillings in the teeth, typical of Italian dentistry, suggest that the girl had been traveling, possibly in the company of a patron enlisting her services, identity unknown. The victim is a known prostitute. This is judged to be an unlawful death. Dr. Emil Corona Coroner. City of Prague Police Department Incident Report. 
Number 1209, victim, Vitti, Anika, investigating officer, Detective Yuri Skolnik. Report, I was walking home and spent the night in the office across the Viktov Vitkov Park. In the early hours of the morning, I discovered the body of a young woman nearly decapitated and gutted, lying at the foot of the statue. Clearly beyond my help, I searched the area for clues before summoning constables to canvas the area in search of witnesses and to take away the body. And that's at the, but that's pretty much everything we know. So, okay, yeah, there's literally nothing um, to use to distract this guy, so I really... I'm not sure what the game is wanting us to do. Uh oh. I'm out of here. Okay, so he won't even go over. Well, shit. Um, maybe we could fuck up his car or something. Like, put it on a neutral, or put it in neutral and, like, push it. Well, that's why I parked there, so he's got no choice. Kind of a moron parks there. <sighs> okay, fine. Um, yeah, he obviously parked there, so we couldn't stick around the building. Um, yeah, I literally cannot do anything here right now. Um, come on, dude, walk. Um, neighborhood. That's where the guy was. Is park. Right. Chapel. Alright, that's what guys part. Um Wait a minute, maybe there's a old guy mentioned um uh, like mentioned that the guy, I guess the culprit apparently is using the sewers to travel through the city without being seen, but it looks like there's no way for us to get down there, so, um, Jesus, uh, I want to talk to Skaldic a bit more about his, uh, errand boy being missing. That concerns me quite a bit. Keep walking. And poor Melina. Oh, our bro has left, it looks like. And so is Skolnik and the body. Let's see if we can get into the sewers. Oh, oh, so there's more over here. Look at this. No time to go fishing. I have things to do. <sighs> that is alignment. Okay. Wow. Absolutely nothing at all. Ugh. Sorry to bother you again, but just to make sure I have all these names. Yes, that is correct. It's just these names. Yeah, da 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 da, as we know. Guy likes to kill girls whose names end with the letter A. Shit. Okay, um. Let's go to. the. lingerie. Well, they look like they get to go. We'll deal with him now. Don't you dare tell me that we won't deal with him later. Thank God. Oh, Kabina, open up. We need to talk. 
Oh, Corbina is his name. Yeah. What do you want? I'd like to ask you a few questions. About? Everything. First off, I'd like to clear the air between us. I'm not after your girls. I'm just trying to find the killer, and that's all. You expect me to believe that? Uh, yes, I do. Well, I don't. Everyone wants something. Just stay out of my business, McPherson. Yes, I do want something from you, but it's not your girls. I'm not a pimpio. I must be. Let's not exchange business. favors. I'll do something for you so that you can see I'm on the level with you. In return, all you have to do is tell that to keep to leave me alone. Yes, yes, we can go to the junkyard. 